Hi, this is Tom Anderson and Maureen Anderson. We're here to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Best ever. Remember to keep Christ in your Christmas this year. Yes, and you know the scripture that talks about in Luke 1 11, paraphrase, that unto us a Savior was born in the city of David, Bethlehem, and that is our Savior Christ Jesus was born. This is his birthday. And so we want to remember that it's his birthday. Have the best time with your family. God, God bless, bless you. you. Merry Christmas. Hi, welcome to the Word for Winners. I'm Tom Anderson. I'm here with my lovely wife. Maureen. And, and it is 55 years of marriage this week, yes. August 19th. Yeah. Now we dated the program. Oh, well. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, we're excited <laughs> about talking married. to you today again, continuing on with the yeah. idea and the thoughts about the wisdom of God. Right. And we just really encourage you to go to our YouTube if you want to hear more of the teachings on wisdom and all the things that God has given us. You go to Dr. C. Thomas Anderson or, um, or Maureen Anderson, and you'll get our teachings over the years, we've been teaching the Word for 45 years, so there's That's a lot exactly of things right. there that will help you and minister to you. And like, share, and subscribe. Yes. And the book is very fascinating because it is Jesus Between the Lines and how he used the wisdom of God in all of his ministry, and everyone could learn something special from the book, not because I wrote it, but because the content is really good. Amen. And would be a blessing to yes. developing uh, your leadership skills. Yes, yes. Amen. Okay, well, we're talking about the wisdom of God. We, we started out looking at uh, Solomon's life, yeah. developing an understanding heart yeah. in 1 Kings chapter 3, and, and uh, it really the kind of heart that David had. He had an understanding heart because the Bible said he had a heart after God's own heart. That's fascinating. We know about his lifestyle. I understand that. Yeah. But there was something, God only looks at the thoughts, attitudes, and intentions of your heart looked at his heart and saw that he had a heart after God. God was blessed by that. Now, understanding heart is what Solomon asked for. An understanding heart has five parts to it, and we've been talking about the different parts so yes, far. Yes, yeah. Dealing with the wisdom of God. Many people ask for the wisdom of God, yeah. but they don't even know what it is when yeah. it operates in their life, and many people operate in the wisdom of God. I'm not, not saying that. But many times people don't even know exactly when they're operating in the wisdom of God. Yeah. So we're trying to take it into the depth of the ancient Hebrew, really understanding in a greater way of what yeah. God is really saying to us about His yeah. wisdom. You know, there's different things that I wrote down, paraphrasing what the Word of God says about His wisdom. Yes. But it says this here, wisdom is better than wealth. We know that wisdom brings you wealth. It's the most most important to desire is wisdom, the wisdom of God. It, it gives you a long life. It gives you peace and happiness. Exalt her and she will promote you and honor you, bring honor into your life. And above all, the Word says, get wisdom. And so we thought we talked about, you know, the Bible talks about in James uh, chapter three at the end, en end of the scriptures there. It says the wisdom that is devilish, it calls it devilish, is bitter envy and selfish ambition. And then That's it right. says uh, the wisdom of God is is peaceable. It's it's yielding. It's full of good fruit. It's full of mercy. I'm paraphrasing it, but these are the things. And uh, actually has reason. It's righteousness. It. It's pure. Yes. It's not a. You're not being a hypocrite. And so the wisdom of God is that way. Amen. And so it's peace loving, good fruit. It is yes. good fruit, and the world the world has its own form of wisdom, but it's yeah. not wisdom. It is not connected to truth. It's connected mm -hmm. to facts which are constantly changing all of the time. Yeah. And we have to be careful of following the wisdom of this world. We, we, when we're operating in the wisdom of God, we have to leave this idea that we're following what the world has taught us to use see, hear, taste, touch, and smell. But there's a place of following the wisdom yeah. of God that supersedes, yes. and it's actually a gift from God, and we receive it when we get born again. It's just whether or not we are able to tap it and use, utilize it. And so that's why we're talking about this wisdom in is a so way important. of depth. 
It's yeah. the wisdom of God, the understanding heart. What's interesting about the understanding heart in Proverbs chapter 8, it actually said, God said, I am understanding. Yeah, well, the I was, am. He yeah. is understanding. So we should be seeking understanding of the word on a regular basis, seeking the understanding, not just knowledge of the word and memorization yeah. of the word and read through it in a year and all the kinds of stuff. That's all wonderful. That's fine because you're in the word of God. But gain understanding from one, one scripture can change and revolutionize your life. Amen. And that's what we're really talking about. So we're trying to take this. So there are, there are basically five parts, and I'm, we're going through them one at a time. And you can go to YouTube and catch up with us because we've gone through, yeah. what, three or four or five teachings on this yes, already. Yes, we have. Yes, okay. Go ahead. Yes, Get yes. Something. Well, I just know that you said Proverbs 8 and 821 says, uh, those who love me, wisdom will gain great wealth. And a glorious inheritance. Ooh, you and went so on further, yeah. it's, you know, and it says, and I wisdom will fill their lives with treasures. And so that's out of one translation that says that. But we know that Ephesians 1 8 out of the TPT says, this super abundant grace. So we're in a new covenant where Christ has already fulfilled the law and already gave us the blessings in the new covenant, it's blessing and blessing, and that he's already given us all the promise that are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. So they're already done in the kingdom and we're to enter in and receive and believe and receive them into our life. But it says that superabundant grace is already powerfully working in us and it's releasing all forms of wisdom. Ooh, and that's I love that. godly all wisdom forms. Get this. and practical understanding. Absolutely. And so that's what grace does for us. All of this comes down to following the Holy Spirit, Amen. listening to the Holy Spirit, yes. looking for the anointing, uh, allowing the Holy Spirit, because He can tell us of things to come. He can tell us and always lead us to the wisdom of yes, the truth yes, of yes. the Word. And that's part, probably a great deal of what's going on in our world today. People are following after the lie and not following after the truth. That's right. The Word of God is yeah. the truth. Jesus yeah. said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you want the life, you're going to have to follow the truth. Which and is do the it Word of God. And do it His way. That's I mean, there's, right. there's no other uh, alternatives to that. And so we, uh, this word perceiving is actually, uh, as I researched it out of the Hebrew, it's, it's, it's ancient Hebrew, by the way. It, it, it is perceiving or perceiving actually have the same particular meaning. And they actually take out of the five parts, they actually utilize almost all five. But we know that we've talked about yes, we have. proper use of resource. Yes. Then we talked about discernment. Discernment yes. helps us decide how to use by the Spirit, how to use resource to make finance, to build relationships, to build the kingdom of God using the wisdom of God. And the third one is perceiving, which is the ability to submit to a higher power, the ability to submit to the Word of God. But it is made up of two interesting words. The ancient Hebrew says it's the combination of discernment and understanding working hand in hand. Oh my God. Now that's fascinating. That's wonderful. That is really yeah. so, so you utilize both of these to gain perceiving. So perceiving has an interesting meaning. Let me just take it. Discernment coupled with understanding creates the power. Listen to this. Okay. It creates the power to distinguish truth and select what is true or excellent. Now that can go into your job and how excellent you are yeah. at your job, but it has the ability. Not just discerning good and evil, but it takes us deeper to be able to be sure we know the truth. Oh, wow. There's a power to know the truth that lives inside of every born-again Christian so that you are not misled by lies. He gave us something special as part of an understanding heart, an ability to be able to constantly find truth if we'll stop long enough, ask God, be connected to his word and operate in his goodness, he will lead us to and his truth. And it's so interesting because the spirit of God is the spirit of truth and he is there to guide us. We're not orphans, the word tells us, and it's John 14, 15, 16, all in there. Uh, it just says to us that the Holy Spirit is our truth. He's our counselor, helper, advocate, and the Amplified says to us. 
And so when we stop to hear what the Spirit of God is saying in us, He will always tell you the truth, which way to go. And you need to pray to God, don't let me go left nor right. There you go. But uh, tell me, because you promised to tell me when I'm going the wrong way. To always lead me to truth. Yeah. That's what we have to depend on Him for. Yeah, yeah. and so it's so interesting because... You know, it also, you know, you were saying this to me the other day, it, it's to yield. And so we know wisdom is to be able to yield. Perceiving is to yield, to submit to God, uh, its power, submitting to God's power, yes. to the principles of a higher authority and uh, the word of God. So we are able to submit to God, to the ways of God. And I thought about you, and uh, we grew up together, went to school together, and I would say if I look back at, at, at your life as a, as a teenager, 17, I think, when we first uh, started dating. Yeah, yes, you, you had my heart for almost 60-plus <laughs> years. Yeah. But anyway, at 17, uh, we went to a small school, and we had 40 in our class. You had 40, and I had 40. But the interesting thing that was, I would say about my husband was that he was very courageous. He was not afraid of anyone. And he was very strong. And so, so these were uh, you, that you were called to be a strong leader, but you had an inability to submit. I couldn't submit to the teachers. To, I couldn't to submit anything to, in to school. school. I couldn't yeah, so, so because of your strength, but your courageousness, you didn't hide it. And so basketball, <laughs> he was on the first five. I think you were a center, weren't you? Center, yeah. Yeah, center. Well, when he decided he was done practice, probably halfway through the practice, he just went and got showered and got dressed and headed home. And, and the coach Not would... Not headed home. I headed to see you. See me, okay. Because yeah. I was 12 miles from home, and the only way I could see you was when I got a ride in to practice. Well, then I had an opportunity to go see you and then still get back before the ride left from practice. So yeah. it just made good sense to me that I practiced. Okay, I practiced, but now I got to go. I got to go see Maureen. Yeah, and, and the coach so would just say, "Where Anderson, where are you going? I'm going to see Maureen. I'm not going to play you on Sunday, on the next game, and you're going to be benched for the year and that, whatever. He had to play me. Yeah, you're the only one that was a center. <laughs> so anyway. you always got pre- played. But I would be horrified. Now, you have to understand, horrified that you would do that. But the thing was that I, my submission, I was, I, I was always on the honor roll. I was a teacher's pet. I would never do something I wasn't supposed to do. Now, we both weren't I Christians. Never. We yeah. weren't Christians. No, we weren't Christians. But the yeah. thing about it was that mine was based out of because I came from a very violent home. And so so I was submitted out of fear of being abused, fear of, That's of, true. of, yeah, of, of being killed, you know, kind of fear. And so 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 I had man fear. You had no man fear. But anyway, so so out of out of your life. You, God had you go into the service. You went into the service. Right. And so what the Lord did is when you went into the service. Best thing in the yeah, world yeah. for me. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you, you were going to do what you wanted to do, but they let you know real quickly you were going to do what they wanted you the first, to do. The first year where they tell you when to go to bed, when to get up, what to do, yeah. where to be, how to dress, how to – it was – the pressure was so intense that I really – there came a point in my life that it, after about a year, I was on a midnight watch from 12 to 4, yeah. and I actually thought, I, I'm not able to think clearly. My mind is just roaring at me, and I, I, it, was, it was really an interesting time. Yeah, but it was also— So I sat down, and I sat down and wrote down everything that I knew about my life. I, I wrote a tablet full during those four hours that I was supposed to be walking the ship. But anyway— I wrote it all down, and then I realized something. I went, wait a minute. Now, I could submit to their stupid rules, (laughs) and I could change my whole life if I pretended to agree. (laughs) And so I did. I made a decision that, okay, I'm standing up, but I'm sitting down inside. Okay, so let's play your game. But actually what came out of that was I learned the ability to, to submit to things that didn't fit my lifestyle. Yeah. And once I learned, it, submission is not about who to. 
Yeah. It's the ability of the heart to submit. You don't submit to Kool-Aid in Guyana. You don't submit to sin. You don't, but you sub, the ability to submit in situations can move you up. When you start submitting to the boss and the company, you can advance in the company, yeah. increase your salary and pay, and your heart should be to make the company and your boss successful. Yeah. If that's your heart, then you're utilizing submission appropriately. Yes, you are. And, and that was the lesson that I learned in the service, and I thank God that he put me through that. But it was... But you never, you never, but the thing about it was that you are called to be a strong lady, leader. You're strong to be courageous, but you had, you learned to have the wisdom of God to be able to submit. Uh, you always were very loyal. Every place you were, Reverend, you were loyal. Never had a job I didn't you like. You respected the, the, the leadership. Absolutely. And you were able to submit to what they've asked you to do. Never to sin, but to the things that, that you knew that you were doing it as unto the Lord. And so out of the service, you grew to have that right a heart of submission. So, so most of it yeah. to me that yeah. points out a, a positive side was yeah. that I've had no fear of man ever. Yeah. I, I remember when Dr. Old Roberts came and spoke at the church and people said, how, how does that go? I mean, how do you sit and talk with them? And I went, I, I don't know that I can explain that, but I don't. I'm not afraid of him. He's, he's a person like I am. What, yeah. What's? What, I mean, I'm going to respect him and honor him. That's all good. Oh, but okay. I'm not like in fear of yeah. talking to him or yeah. being with him. I mean, we actually ended up at the, spending yeah. time with him at home. He mentored my our yeah, lives. His home. She his was home, in yeah. his home. I mean, yeah. so we had a developed a relationship. So, but I've never had fear of man. Maybe that's been a very positive thing. That was life. a positive thing because, like I said, you were courageous and you right. were bold. And the Bible says, you know, the new covenant, and we see that in Joshua going into the land of promise, he said, be, cur be courageous and be, you know, and bold. And uh, and fear and don't fear and don't be discouraged. And th these were strengths, that gifts that God put in you. And uh, learning, though, to be able to to submit in a way that is healthy. Now, for me, my submission was fear of man. And so once I, you know, as I, I know these things, I thought to myself one day, do yeah. I do I have this? They call it survival state. Well. I should. I was Based in that abuse, home no, to survive, and I became right. the perfect child in every way and would never do anything that, that they told me not to do. I never, you know. And so, and so I didn't know that I had fear of man in me. I didn't know that. And so when I prayed and asked the Lord, do I have that? The, the Lord's like, oh, yeah, you have that. And I prayed. I repented, and I prayed for that to go in my life, that survival state of, of the fear for your life. That's what it is. A child can get fearful for their life. And so then they take this on, so don't hurt me. I'll do whatever you say. And that lifted off of me, and it just changed my life. I was free oh, that now. That was suppressing your leadership. Yes, that and also having a voice, yes, being able to have a voice. Uh, of God, uh, and so it would just change my life. And so now I, you know, the Bible says, you know, don't fear man, don't fear man. And so I was God. gone, and it just, I, just, yeah. But be anyway, God -pleaser, I'm able to submit. Be a God pleaser and not a man pleaser. Yes, I would God pleaser, and so I was able. And so some of you out there maybe have that kind of, you know, uh, situation going on in your life, and I want to pray for you at the end about this. Uh, absolutely. For you, absolutely. yes, yes. Uh, uh, so anyway. You know, we, we probably should have caught that early on when we were just in college before we got saved. And we go to uh, parties. I just Come want on. to say that I'm going to tell on you too. Yeah. And so we, we go to a party or something, you know. and, and we, were, we didn't know the Lord. We just go to a college situation. Yeah, Nothing college going on. Just a bunch of people just getting together. Having a good time. And, just a nice time. And yeah. Yeah. All good friends that we had in, in college. Yeah. But okay. you would say, now if anybody talks to me you make sure you answer for me. So she'd hang on my arm and just be totally quiet. She did, that's fear of man that was yeah, so oh, yeah. powerful, so strong. It did change dramatically to a degree as soon as you got born again. Oh yeah. That changed some, but there was still this yeah. something that finally the Lord set you completely free. Totally free of it. 
Yes, it was so exciting. You know, the Word of God tells us this, you know, Colossians 3, 23 and 24 says, put your heart and soul into every activity you do. As though you were doing it as to the Lord himself, not merely to others. And so he's, he's saying this is the wisdom of God, is to be able to submit in whatever you're doing. You're not doing it to, for people, but you're doing it as unto the Lord, that kind of submission unto him. And, um, and it says, goes on to say this, verse 24, for we know that we will receive a reward. So there's a reward in being able to submit to authority and an inheritance from the Lord as we serve the Lord Yahweh, the anointed one. And Amen. so that's what we have in our heart. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to work and I'm working on this job or, uh, you know, or, or what I'm doing or serving in the church and I'm able to submit, be loyal and do it is unto the Lord. You're looking to God in, in your life. And this Colossians 3, 17 says the same. For whatever you do in word and do, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. So we're giving thanks to God. And that's the way I saw that you always were. Whatever you did, you always loved. You loved every job you ever had, no matter what it was. But also, you were always very loyal and respectful to wherever you worked. And you always gave more than uh, 100%. You always even went more than that. Start early, quit late, and charge for eight. That's what you would do. And uh, so out of that, you always had supernatural favor because you had a, you had the wisdom of God. You had the purity that I saw that uh, you wanted the love of God to be on your bo- your your job that you'd go. And you'd also want make to make the company be able successful. That's what make you should them be doing. Successful. And so you gave your Zig best. Zig Ziglar said it this way. If you make enough other people successful, you'll be successful. Yeah. And that's what the Word of God is saying here. There's a reward when you have that kind of heart. And so we're learning about wisdom. And I remember this one job before you you built a Christian school. God had you do that when we first got saved. Then we moved out here and you worked in, uh, in, uh, in the world for a few years and then you're back in the ministry. But while you're working in the world, you're working in that that sheet metal shop and you went early to work and you learned all the plans that needed to be done. And uh, then the boss had, had an emergency and had to leave and you were the only one that knew the plan. So you got the job. I got the job. And so th- that you have to- You spent under, uh, extra time home. I took plans home and studied them. So I, I just wanted to know what I was gonna do in the morning, mostly because I didn't want to be told what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned. <laughs> Ahead of the boss, wherever I could possibly, <laughs> yeah, and uh, that worked. And worked to your life. advantage, yes, <laughs> yes, my, yes, exactly yes, right. yes. So anyway, uh, so we you, we need to. I want to read this one line one more time yeah. to him, uh, mm-hmm. and then we're going to probably pick this up in the next show yeah, as we well. Yeah, we will. Yes, it's but so important to learn. If you haven't caught it. up, you can go back uh, on YouTube and yeah. look all oh, of yes. this up and kind of catch up with us because we have talked about uh, this now for four or five weeks. But this is to understand discernment coupled with understanding creates the power to distinguish truth and select what is true and do excellence. So I want to just say it to all of America, to all believers, to anyone that listens to this. I want you to understand that in all circumstances, you want to be led to truth so that you don't live by lies. Yeah. Truth will bring you life. Lies will bring you death. So this applies to every aspect of your life. And it applies particularly to what's coming up in America today. We have to gain and understand yeah. truth and no longer Yes, and I'd like lies. to pray for you, as I brought up today, that maybe you came from a violent home and it's caused you to take on that survival mode. And so I want to pray for you right now that you get free of that and, and you maybe don't even know it because you've had it all your life. And so you've learned to be so submissive, but, it's, but your submission is out of fear for your life. And uh, so let's just pray for you right now yes. in the name of Jesus right now. So Father God, anyone out there that, that Father God, that's come from a very uh, 
a violent background or abusive in any way that they have totally let go of who they are to to now be who that person wants them to be. But they took on the fear of man, they took on that survival state, that submission that is not of you. So Father God, right now they just repent of it, they forgive uh, whoever the family member was or whoever had put that on them. We command that to go and we say this fear of man is, is bound and has to go. This survival state is gone. In Jesus' name, we see it gone and we, they see it just lift off of them, take that, that uh, baggage out of their life, let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn up all the shaft, and now put on them the ability to, ha to be free in God, to now fill it up with the love of God and, the, and the, the safety of God, the protection of God in that. Father God, now the very wisdom of God that is a healthy way that we fear God. We you know, not fear, but we, we, we please God and not man. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you've never received Christ as Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to receive Him right now. God wishes that none should perish, but all should come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Not to be religious, but to gain the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through Jesus. Here's your opportunity Amen. to change your life right now. You've been watching through the program. This is your opportunity. Don't miss it. Pray this prayer with me. Just repeat after me, dear Father God. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin and I ask you, dear Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, it changed my life, it'll change your life, it changed Maureen's life, it changed Amen. lives all over the world. Amen. Because Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. God bless you. We will see you next time. Yes, and I'd like to really close with this today, that if you got blessed today by the, the, the teaching of learning about wisdom, that you will uh, sow a financial seed uh, of, uh, just to declare your blessing. And, and this ministry, the Word for Winners, is all over the world. It is getting people free from religion and legalism into the life of grace, the new covenant, and uh, and then also we, we take care of orphanages, we, we, we uh, start churches, uh, we are feeding the hungry, and so we have so many things that you we are giving part of that. into. Yeah, so you get credit for all that Word for Winners is doing. It supports large ministries, and so we really encourage you to become Keeper. a partner and to sow seed. And God bless you. And so we've had a great time today, and we, we see you next time. Bless you. Are you ready to go to the next level in your life? By studying the life of Jesus, we can see there are success principles that he lived and illustrated for us. In this book, Personal Growth to Power, Jesus Between the Lines, Dr. Tom Anderson shares 18 power principles that will produce success in your life. Through application of this teaching, you will become successful at whatever you put your hand to. Find this resource and more at thewordforwinners.com.